This video will be a walkthrough of how to perform the lower extremity musculoskeletal physical examination. In this video, we will be discussing tips and tricks on how to gain comfort while doing the lower extremity physical examination. Let's go ahead and get started. For the hip musculoskeletal examination, you want to first begin with the patient lying supine, and you also want to make sure that you're pulling out the tray when you're actually doing the OSCE. So first, you're going to go ahead and start off by inspecting the hips, but you just want to verbalize that you'll be doing that. Next, you also want to verbalize that you'll be palpating the hips, but again, you won't be actually doing that during the OSCE. So for the range of motion assessment, you want to start off by having the patient do active flexion. So can you go ahead and bend your knee and hip up so that way you're trying to touch your um, knee to your chest? All right, perfect. So now go ahead and straighten that back out. So if the patient has a uh, limited active range of motion, you can then go ahead and put them into hip flexion. So put one hand on their lower leg and one underneath their thigh, and then go ahead and just try to touch their knee as far as possible to towards their chest. So next for hip abduction, um, you wanna go ahead and place one hand on their opposite lower leg to help stabilize it. And then with your other hand, go ahead and place that around the patient's lower leg. And now go ahead and just slowly slide that away from the midline until you start to feel some resistance. And then that's their hip abduction. Next for hip adduction, again, go ahead and stabilize the other leg. And then go ahead and just slightly lift this leg up and bring it across their midline right here, going as far as possible. And once you feel some resistance, then go ahead and stop and slowly bring it back to the starting position. Next, you wanna evaluate hip internal and external rotation. So go ahead and place one hand on the patient's lower leg and then another underneath their thigh and go ahead and bring their hip and knee into 90 degrees of flexion like this. Next, you wanna go ahead and just switch your hand positioning so that way it's nice and comfortable. So this is a neutral position for rotation. To, um, to go into external rotation, what you wanna do is go ahead and swing the lower leg in, which will cause the knee to go out. So this is hip external rotation. And now to check hip internal rotation, go ahead and swing the lower leg out, which will cause the knee to go in. And that's hip internal rotation. So when you're doing internal rotation, um, so in external rotation, one thing that's important is that whichever direction that the knee is going in, that's the direction of hip rotation. So again, if your hip is going in, that's internal, or your knee is going in, that's internal rotation. If your knee is going out, that's external rotation. And now can you go ahead and um, switch over to being on your stomach? So now for, um, for hip extension, what you're going to be doing is just ask the patient to keep their knee straight and lift their leg straight up towards the ceiling. Perfect, now go ahead and lower that. If you have any limitations in the active hip extension, go ahead and place one hand underneath their thigh and one underneath their lower leg. And now just go ahead and slowly lift that straight up and then go ahead and bring that back down. And that's your range of motion for the hip. For evaluation of the knee, first you're going to go ahead and start off by inspecting it. You want to be looking for any gross deformities. You want to note the alignment of the patella. And additionally, you want to be looking for any signs of an effusion, especially a loss of the dimples on the knee right here and here, which will let you know that you may have a knee effusion. Uh, and then finally, you want to be looking at the quadriceps muscle um, when, and compare bilaterally to see if you see any atrophy. For palpation of the knee, you wanna go in a systematic approach, moving from a proximal to a distal um, approach. So first, go ahead and palpate the patient's quadriceps tendon right here. And then go ahead and palpate their patella. And then their patellar tendon right underneath the patella. And then you have your tibial tuberosity right here. So next, go ahead and bend the patient's knee to about 90 degrees right here. So what you wanna do is go ahead and make a C shape with your hand and go ahead and place the C part right here, right underneath the patient's patella. By doing this, your index finger should land right here on the medial joint line and your thumb should land here on the lateral joint line. And to know that you're in the joint line itself, you should feel two prominent bumps on the sides of both of your fingers, which would be the femoral condyle and tibial condyles. But again, you just wanna make sure that you're in the right spot, that you're actually on the joint line. 
And on the medial side right here, um, you have your medial meniscus, and then you can also palpate your MCL, which goes from your medial femoral condyle down to your um, medial tibial plateau. And then on the lateral aspect, um, you should feel the lateral meniscus as well as your LCL, which runs from your lateral femoral condyle down to your fibular head right here. So you may feel that ropey structure right there. And also for palpation, you wanna palpate the posterior aspect of the knee right here, back in the pop popliteal fossa, checking to see if the patient has a Baker cyst. All right, good. I'll go ahead and straighten out your knee right here. So now you wanna go ahead and assess range of motion. So, um, so first you wanna um, do flexion. So go ahead and just bend your knee as much as possible. All right, good. So now have your, have your foot down right there. All right, perfect, so that's flexion. So you can go ahead and relax that. And if the patient has limited flexion, um, you can do it passively by placing one hand on the lower leg and then just go ahead and just slide that right there to assess flexion. All right, good. So now to assess um, extension, you wanna just place one hand on the patient's thigh and one underneath the lower leg and go ahead and just while stabilizing your hand right here, go ahead and just pull the lower leg up like this to assess this extension and hyperextension right here and then go ahead and relax. For the foot and ankle portion of the musculoskeletal examination, first you wanna begin by inspecting the patient's foot and ankle, looking for any gross deformities or any signs of swelling, as well as calluses or a bunion on the first digit. Next, for palpation, begin by palpating the patient's fibular head, which is on the lateral aspect of the knee, then go ahead and trace the perineal muscles located on the lateral aspect of the lower leg, and then go ahead and palpate the patient's medial malleolus, which is the most prominent bump on the inside of the foot and ankle right here. And then go ahead and palpate the patient's lateral malleolus, which is the most prominent bump on the outside of the ankle right here. Next, you wanna go ahead and just slide your thumb down and in, which will lead you into a divot right here, known as the sinus tarsi, which contains the anterior talofibular ligament. So next, you wanna go ahead and palpate the patient's Achilles, which is right back here, which is a ropey tendinous structure that comes and then inserts onto the calcaneus. So go ahead and palpate the calcaneus. And then you wanna just go ahead and palpate the inferior portion of the calcaneus down right here by your calcaneal tubercle. Finally, for palpation, you wanna go ahead and palpate the MTP joints with two fingers. So the MTPs are located right here. So just go ahead and just squeeze each MTP right here assessing for any tenderness or warmth or swelling. Finally, you wanna assess the foot and ankle range of motion. So first begin by assessing dorsiflexion. So go ahead and ask the patient to pull your toes up as if you're trying to touch your nose. All right, good, now relax. And now ask the patient to go ahead and push down as if they're pushing on a gas pedal. And that's plantar flexion. So now ask the patient to turn their foot and ankle in, so that way the sole of their foot is facing the other side. Good, and that's inversion. And go ahead and ask the patient to turn the foot and ankle out, away from their opposite foot, and that's eversion. So first you have the bulge test. So for this, go ahead and place your hand on the patient's distal thigh. And then now what you wanna do is go ahead and just slide your hand down and then with your fingers, try to provide a force that's going from the medial direction to a lateral direction. And now go ahead and just tap on the lateral aspect of the joint. And then if the patient has an effusion, you'll see a fluid wave going back towards the medial aspect. So again, one more time. So come down, then put your hands medially right here and go ahead and just tap the lateral aspect of the knee and you should feel or see a fluid wave returning back towards the medial side. Next, for the patellar belotment test, what you wanna do is start about 10 um, centimeters proximally to the patella on the distal thigh, and then go ahead and squeeze your hand down right here, moving distally. And once you get here, go ahead and just kind of um, bring your fingers together on both sides, which should push any fluid underneath the patella. Then with your other hand, go ahead and just push down on the patella and you'll feel it kind of like blotting or floating within the fluid that's underneath it. 
um, if the patient does have an effusion. So again, one more time, go ahead and just kind of come proximally to distally and then squeeze your fingers around the patella right here and then push down on the patella and you should feel the patella kind of floating on the fluid if the patient has an effusion. So for this, you wanna go ahead and actually place the patient in a figure four. So go ahead and place their foot on their opposite thigh and have them come right here. So again, um, now what you wanna do is go ahead and form a C with your hand and you wanna place the C portion right underneath the patella right here. So now your thumb should be landing right here on the medial joint line and your index finger should be landing on the lateral joint line. So um, within here, you would have your medial meniscus on the medial joint line and your lateral meniscus on the lateral joint line. And you can also palpate the MCL on the medial joint line. Again, running from the medial femoral condyle down to the tibial condyle. You should feel that as a ropey structure. And then on the lateral aspect, you can really feel the LCL really nicely in this position. Um, and it'll be a ropey structure along that lateral joint line, going from the lateral femoral condyle down to the fibular head. What we'll be doing is the McMurray's test. So what you wanna do is go ahead and just patient, um, bend the patient's knee up to about 90 degrees right here. And again, form your C shape with the C right underneath the patella and you should have your one finger on the medial joint line, one finger on the lateral joint line, and then place your other hand underneath the patient's heel right here. And now go ahead and just maximally bend the patient's knee right here. And then with your hand that's on their heel, go ahead and internally rotate the lower leg. And now go ahead and just strain out their lower leg. And then bring them back to the knee flexion right here. Now go ahead and um, externally rotate their lower leg with your hand on their heel and go ahead and strain out their leg right here and then return them back to the starting position. And you can do this a couple of times and what you're looking for with the positive test would be clicking on the medial or lateral joint lines. So you should feel that clicking right on your fingers. If you feel clicking underneath your palm, that is likely coming from the patellofemoral joint and is not a positive test. So we'll be doing the anterior drawer test. Um, for this test, you wanna go ahead and bend the patient's knee to about 90 degrees right here. And then you're going to go ahead and just kind of like either sit or uh, make sure that their foot is stabilized. So you could do this right here. And now you wanna go ahead and place your fingers behind their calf right here and kind of massaging their hamstring muscles to help relax their hamstrings. And then go ahead and place your thumbs right here by the tibial uh, tuberosity. To perform the special test, you want to go ahead and just pull the tibia straight out directly towards you, right here. So again, for this special test, you're moving in a direction that's like this, directly towards you. You don't want to be moving up or you don't want to be moving down. You want to pull just straight directly towards you. And for this test, what you're looking for is right along here, along the joint lines, you'll be looking for increased anterior translation, especially when compared um, with the contralateral side. Next, for the posterior drawer test, again, you wanna go ahead and just bend their knee to about 90 degrees right here, and then go ahead and sit on their foot to help stabilize it. And you wanna be massaging the hamstring muscles a little bit with your fingers to go ahead and relax them and then place your thumbs up by the tibial tuberosity. Now, to perform this test, go ahead and push directly back in the direction this way. So, right here. And what you'll be looking for, again, is along the joint line, you'll be looking for any increased posterior translation when compared with the opposite side. Now for the Lachman test, what you want to do is go ahead and place one hand on the patient's distal thigh to help stabilize it and place your other hand behind the patient's tibia with your thumb at about the tibial tuberosity. To perform this test, go ahead and place the patient in a little bit of knee flexion right here. And now while making sure that the hand that's on the thigh is stabilizing their thigh and that it's not moving at all, go ahead and use this hand to pull the patient's tibia directly towards you Again, you don't want to be moving um, directly straight up 
or in a different direction, you want to be pulling it directly towards you. So now while stabilizing their thigh, we're going to pull their tibia directly towards you. And what you should feel with this while you're doing this, you want it to be a nice, like one nice fast motion and you should feel a nice solid end feel of the ACL. And if the patient has a soft end feel or increased joint laxity when compared to the opposite side, then that's a positive Lachman test. We'll be performing the valgus test for, um, which assesses for um, injury to the medial collateral ligament or MCL. So for this test, you wanna go ahead and place one hand on the medial aspect of the patient's lower leg and one hand on the lateral aspect of their knee. So you want this hand on the lateral aspect of their knee to not be too high up here, but you really want it to be directly on the side. So to perform this test, you wanna go ahead and bring their knee into a little bit of flexion right here. And now you wanna pull the um, lower leg towards you and you wanna push your hand on that lateral aspect of their knee directly in a straight line away from you. So it should look like this. So while doing this test, you should be looking at about the medial joint line to look for any increased gapping, especially compared to the opposite side, which would indicate a sprain of the MCL. And if you look here on the medial joint line, you can see just a little bit of slightly increased gapping right there. And if it's significantly increased, then that would be a positive test. For the very stress test, which assesses for injury to the lateral collateral ligament or the LCL, you want to go ahead and just place one hand on the lateral aspect of the lower leg and just kind of slide their lower leg slightly up. up. And now with your other hand, you want to place it on the medial aspect of their knee. Again, while making sure that it's not too high or not too low, you want it directly on the side. So now what you're going to do is you're going to pull with this hand directly towards you and you're going to push in a straight line like this with the hand that's on the medial aspect of the knee. Um, so to perform this test, go ahead and bend their knee slightly right here, and then go ahead and pull with your bottom hand and push with your top hand. And with this test, you're looking for increased laxity or gapping on the lateral joint line right here, which would indicate an injury to the lateral collateral ligament, especially when compared to the bilateral side. Thank you for watching this walkthrough on how to perform the lower extremity musculoskeletal physical examination. 